with the ongoing war effort. Hello YouTube, how is everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome back to my playthrough of Medal of Honor Pacific Assault. Sorry, sorry I haven't had this part up in two weeks. I've just been busy working on so many projects, but we have the final part of Medal of Honor Pacific Assault. I hope that you guys like my cosplay for this part. Uh, we're going to be doing the Battle of Tarawa, so let's do it here. And if you enjoyed this series, uh, do drop a like on it. It does help a lot. We're gonna steamroller the place until hell wouldn't have it. That's what the Navy's telling us anyway. Man, I want to believe him, but the boldest statements always come from the guys who don't go ashore. All night I listened to our ships pounding terror. And at dawn I saw the island for the first time. Sure don't look like much. That's what scares me. That, and they gave us steak and eggs this morning, and they've never done that before. But this part of the ocean is the doorway to Japan's home islands. So that's why we're here. And that's why they're there. You know why they gave them steak and eggs? You, you really don't eat that much fancy food, especially, you know, as a soldier during World War II. Um, the reason they gave them that is because it might be their final meal. That's why. So they wanted the soldiers to have a, a good final meal. Kara was gonna be a really brutal battle. usually didn't last very long. No matter how much training you got or how strong you are, when you strap up and step on a battlefield for the first time, it changes you forever. Tarot was just another strip of sand out in the middle of nowhere, but for many of us, it would be the last thing we ever saw. The only bright spot in all this is that somewhere, Frank is resting up in a nice, clean hospital, probably chasing after all the pretty nurses. At least I know that one of my brothers in this war is safe. It's funny, but seems like Frank got the best of the deal. The rest of us have another island to take. All we can do is hope that we make it out alive. You know the thing is, though. Tommy, uh, I'll see you on the beach. The thing about it is that even if you are the best well-trained soldier who has survived so many battles, uh, is that the most random thing can kill you in war that you don't expect. Like, um, John Bassalone, for example, uh, he was a Marine at the Battle of Guadalcanal who killed, like, over a hundred Japanese soldiers on Guadalcanal with just a browning machine gun. Like, he just literally wasted uh, an entire battalion that was charging him, doing a bonsai charge. And um, uh, he uh, survived most of the war. That was in 1942. He survived most of the war up until Iwo Jima three years later in 45. And in Iwo Jima, he got blown up by a mortar. I think he was in a jeep and a mortar hit him directly and killed him. And so this was like one of the most elite best guys ever. And the most random thing killed him in war. So that's the thing that happens is even if you have the best training ever, you know, your life could just be taken just like that from just the most random thing in war. Um, something that you don't even see, something that you're not even um, prepared for. You know, you, you could be killed by artillery just like as you're you're about to land on the beach before you can even get on the beach. You all, get all that training and then just to get killed, it can just happen just like that. That's what's so, so terrifying and scary about war.
And if anybody has ever seen um, that movie, um, uh, the movie uh, All Quiet on the Western Front, um, uh, and I'm talking about the older versions, I'm not talking about the newer version, um, uh, but um, uh, in, the, in the older versions, um, uh, what was his name? Katz, I think his name was. He was like the older, um, uh, the older German World War I veteran. Now, this guy had survived. This guy was like an, more an elderly soldier. This guy had survived the majority of World War I. And uh, he had gotten through so many ridiculous battles, and in um uh, in the final in the final year of the war, he basically got killed by a piece of shrapnel from a plane that just hit him in the back of the head. So it can just happen just like that. Nearly dead already, ah. Shotgun ain't any good from back here. Oh wow. I got bayoneted already, man. That was just um barely any cover just when we got off. Got much help either. the um Arasaka scoped type 97 Where am I supposed to go right now? I'm confused. on them now.
being trapped on on a beach like this is the worst possible place that you can be in because you're in the open now amphibious landings were very brutal especially in world war ii but your best chance of survival is you have to keep pushing you cannot stay on the beach you have to keep pushing and i hope you can find some cover on the beach Oh, the guy's got a flamethrower, too. Yeah, he's gonna burn them out. Oh! life they would be absolutely screaming at each other because you wouldn't be able to uh, hear anything under this gunfire the thing is Japanese counterattacks like this were actually very common on the island campaigns and they didn't really make much sense because the Japanese fortified the islands they were in a defensive position they had an advantage and yet they launched a lot of these counterattacks exposing themselves to these charges Back here. Oh, there is a Okay, we secured a beachhead. That's always the the worst part of any kind of amphibious invasion is always the original the beachhead. The, that's always the worst part of any amphibious landing. 
intel shows four batteries ahead. Let's sweep the area and take out those guns. You think we can take them? Yeah, I'm we got them. Advance, advance! Oh, advance. Oh, advance. Oh, advance. Oh, up on them. Group up together. Now this gun is apparently not a Lewis gun, um, which is the British um, light machine gun. Uh, you guys actually told me that the, that's a Japanese version of the Lewis gun. I didn't even know the Japanese developed their own uh, Lewis gun. I need health. I need it now. Yeah. Down to three, Tommy. There's one! Where's he at? Okay, back into action. There's one! I can't see him! Move up. This is the bar, the Browning automatic rifle, one of the greatest uh, American weapons ever made. Uh, this uh, this light machine got got America through uh, through both World Wars, World War One and World War Two. It fires the same cartridge. Um, uh, oh, take out AA gun before it destroys Allied point. Okay, it fires the same cartridge as the M1 Grant, the 30 odd six. I think that the um, uh, that the the bar. I I think that the World War II version, I think the World War One version actually I think has a faster fire rate, and the reason they slowed it down is because it has 20 round magazine and it was meant to make the gun more controllable. I think that's why it was slow, the fire rate was slowed down. Okay, 
clear. Gun emplacements firing on LVGs. Think that's landing vehicle transports? It's one down. Ooh. Close. Okay, tank destroyed. Another gun. Destroyed, okay. Last mag, to make it count. How many more of them are left over here? Bunch of pillboxes over there. Okay, I'm gonna request a heal from the medic here. Could use some help, Jimmy. Advance, advance. Watch, hang in there, buddy. Tommy, I've got enough for one more move. How that first shot didn't kill him, but enemy spotted. Come on, yo! Let's go. I'm out. Cover me. Watch out. Here they come. They're on the move. Oh, I think it's a Type 99 that guy just dropped. Pick that up in one second here. Oh, yes, this. I've had one of you guys ask me about this in the comments, um, I think you asked me about this, London. Uh, this, uh, uh, yes, this is the Japanese, um, this is a Japanese light machine gun, the Type 99, and this was actually a decent machine gun. It was actually pretty reliable. Let's get 
Now, people here. think that it's a copy off the Bren, um, uh, but there was a lot of countries that were developing very similar guns at that time. I got him! Yeah! They're dead! We're coming, Tom! This thing has a bayonet too. Oh god, no, no. Be careful, pal. Get him. Okay, let's have a look. How did I not see that that MG? How did I not see it? That was Supply room. Oh, where's he at? Everybody go get clear. Get down, yo. Get it. I can't see him. Well, that goes up. Oh, man, this is gonna be big. me here oh he has no more oh great Whoa, whoa. Oh my god, there's so many tanks. the gun emplacements. Right. 
I do like the sights on this thing. No. One of the gun emplacements. Okay, gone. Oh god. Right next to me. Six guns still, neutralized command center defenses. That's their command center, that's gotta be it. Oh crap, that's a, that tank's a live one. to destroy the tank. Watch out, they're coming! 
Damn, okay. That tank's gonna blow. Tank's gone, okay. Another tank. A lot of health here. Okay, command center has been cleared. Now we gotta destroy those um, gun emplacements. Oh, this, they have a tunnel network under here too. Trying to get through, but they're blocking my path. Open fire! Suppressing fire! Suppressing fire! Great shot! Watch it! We got jabs! Here too. The perfect weapon for close quarters that I have here right now. Hip fire this thing.
Damn, they're everywhere in these tunnels. more let's clear this getting insane. It's, there's so many of them. Oh my... There's a There's a pillbox. I didn't even see it. Doesn't look too bad. Didn't even see the I didn't even see the pillbox.
Three gun emplacements left, okay. Germans, it's American tanks. Yes, there we go. Yeah, get him. You'll see that. That tank can't even put a dent in it. We gotta blow it from the inside. Advance, advance. They're on the move. Heads up, yo. The hell is this? Portable anti tank rifle, but. Ah, damn. Wait, when I gotta reload. There we go, okay. Destroy gun emplacements. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, perfect. I really needed that. Oh my god. That sucked. I had almost no health, and then I'm gonna I gotta run up the hill of like 23% health. Oh man. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna have to time this right.
Ah, come on. Crap, shoot him, shoot him! So many of them. Oh my... That was, that was crazy. Keep your head down, Mac. There's snipers all over the place. They know we're in here. What are they trying to do? They're probing us, trying to see what we got. Get ready! The rest of them will be here soon! Try to grab this Sully! How about some help? Okay, that go that side is clear. Where is he? Toss a grenade, Rook! Gonna need to pick up another gun in a moment here. Crap these pillboxes. Oh crap! Did you see that? That was a, that trap there. There's a chap. 
Damn, I didn't expect that. Suicide bomber. I'm going to need a heal. Another suicide bomber. The Japanese did do bombings like that. This is why I've always said is that Imperial Japan is literally the toughest enemy the US has ever fought. Because when the... The last year of the war um, uh, for in, uh, in Europe, the Germans had realized that they lost the war. And it's not worth dying for Hitler, and a lot of Germans were just mass surrendering at the end of the war. The ones who fought on were typically the SS, like the ones who were the most fanatical to the regime. But a lot of Germans were surrendering near the end of the war. But the Japanese just kept fighting on till the very end. They would not surrender at all. And that's why even though the Japanese were not as technologically advanced as the Germans were during World War II, they are the toughest enemy the U.S. has ever fought in its history. Crap. The last one, I gotta be careful then. I got him, okay. Okay, there we go. Stewart, that's an American tank. Treat it. 
They clear. Got it. Okay. Ah. Hope they didn't take a lot of my health. Advance, advance. Come on, yo. Get it. Be careful, buddy. Reloading. Got it. That means artillery. A good commander knows when an attack is helpless. Thompson, okay. bad feeling about this. They're coming! They're charging! Burnside charge! Watch it! Watch out! Damn! There's one! Yep. The Japanese did attacks like this in real life, they were called Bonsai Charges. And this is what's so confusing about the Japanese battle tactics in, in World War II. They're defending, they have the advantage. Why are they charging and doing bayonet charges? This was scary, this is terrifying. It's also why the Japanese had such high casualties. Keep up the fire, come on. Fire! Cease fire! 
clear. Oh. Think that's it. This is why I've always said, you know, Imperial Japan is the toughest enemy yeah. the US has ever fought in its history. November 23rd, 1943. When the smoke had cleared, more than 5,000 American and Japanese men had lost their lives on a beach not much wider than a few football fields. A Japanese admiral once said, we couldn't take Tarawa with a million men in a hundred years. Well, the Marines did it in three days. And now it's over. But of course it ain't really over. The road to Tokyo is a long one. We're only halfway there. But son of a bitch, we're alive. Hopefully we've earned a little rest, but tyranny doesn't sleep. And freedom? Well, it's anything but free. Devil dogs, on your feet! We're moving out! And that just that just so makes me really sad. Um, vaccinations, and there's these two nurses standing there, you know, giving everyone their shots. And one of these dames looks like Grable. I mean, wow, long legs. <laughs> but the other one looks like Gable, complete with pencil mustache. I'm not kidding you, fellas. So I get in line, and all the time I'm thinking, oh God, I volunteered for this tour. Give me the one that looks like Grable. So I get up near the front of the line, and the only guy in front of me is this scrawny little kid with freckles and wire brush for hair. And this little bastard's gonna get grable. I mean, her uniform is sticking way out to here. Ain't no way I'm gonna get stuck with Red Butler in a dress. So the gorgeous dame turns to Freckleface and asks him if he's afraid of needles. I tell you, fellas, wherever this kid is from, all the women must be flat-chested, because all he can do is stare at her with his mouth hanging open. So I shove him aside and I tell Grable that a real Marine ain't afraid of no pointy objects. Just then Gable steps up, shoves a needle in my arm and says, a real Marine has enough manners to wait in line. And I turn to her and say, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Yeah. So um, what I was saying is um, special thanks to the United States Marine Corps. So um, what I was saying is, um, uh, the reason that this, um, uh, that was just really sad is because just think about what these guys went through. And imagine all those Japanese soldiers just sacrificed themselves like that, just did those bonsai charges, basically dying for their emperor, who they believed was a god. Like, Japan was a very different country back then. Is If I was to compare Japan to any country, um, uh, back then today, it would be like North Korea. That's what Japan was like. But the only difference between J J Imperial Japan and North Korea is that the Imperial Japanese weren't starving in their country. The soldiers were starving on certain fronts, but the Japanese in the mainland were not starving. Um, at least for the most part, not until near the end of the war. And, uh, that's, that's it, is that the, the reason I compare North Korea and Imperial Japan is because the two countries are very similar. Their, e ec their e ec economies might be very different, where Imperial Japan was a free market, um, you know, economy, and North Korea, you know, is a communist country, but the similarities are in how the government is run, just the authoritarianism of the government, and the fact that the, the people in the country are just so brainwashed and believe that their leader is a god, they believe the emperor is a god, and they believe that Kim Jong, um, Un in North Korea is a god, so that's... That's, I think, the most accurate comparison I can make of what Imperial Japan was like um, back then. Uh, but Japan has changed a lot. You know, it's it's amazing how, how much Japan has changed, how, how advanced Japan has gotten. For a country that has gotten destroyed in, um, uh, in World War II to be able to rebuild and become like an economic giant and one of the richest countries in the world today, uh, it's amazing what the Japanese were able to accomplish um, with all their advancements today.
but Japan is one of the most peaceful countries in the world today, and it's a, you know, it's a very different country than what it was back then. But I do think there should be definitely more games set in the Pacific, and it's like I said, Imperial Japan is 100%, in my opinion, of the toughest enemy America's ever fought in its, um, in its history. And it just ends there. The game ends in Tarawa, you know, there's still a year and a half from the war, it's still... of the command performances, GI Journal, and Mail Call. With the ongoing war efforts and the lack of secured space for defensive and strategic planning, the once temporary U.S. building in Virginia, dubbed the Pentagon, appears to be filling a more permanent status. Defense and military personnel commented on the location and accessibility of the building and are looking to keep this a more permanent facility. The Pentagon was opened in January of this year and is named so after its rather peculiar five-sided structure. From New York, this is Steve McPherson. This is World News Radio, serving the armed forces stationed across the world, bringing you the latest in news. I'm Walter Brennigan, and this is World News Radio. We have breaking news coming in from one of our correspondents in the Pacific, Frank Turner. From our correspondent monitoring in I do like how you can listen to the radio at the end of the mission. Yeah, so that is pretty much it, guys, there. Um, yeah, so you can, um, I guess these are like collectibles that you get from, um... Yeah, from like hero moments. I think there actually is a World War II documentary in this game. I think that I might, um... I might also play the World War II documentary. I might do that also. But yeah, the the Pacific is a front that I don't think the Pacific gets enough credit. Um, pop up facts. Yeah, so there is a, um, uh, there is a docu- a World War II documentary here. Um, I'm gonna put the World War II documentary as, like, a separate thing if you guys want to watch it, unless it's the same thing from the Medal of Honor Rising Sun one. Um, uh, but I will have that up as a separate part, and I won't monetize it, so the entire World War II documentary will not have any ads. I don't want to make money off of something like a World War II documentary reacting to it. Uh, I don't think that that's right. Um, uh, so we'll have that, and that'll be completely ad-free, um, and, uh, I'll have that documentary up for you guys, um, uh, reacting to it, uh, in a few days. Um, so thank you guys for watching this game, it's a very underrated, uh, you know, World War II game. I've never played this Medal of Honor game, i played a lot of Medal of Honors, but i never played this one. Uh, and this is a Medal of Honor that I've always wanted to play a lot, um, which was Pacific Assault. Um, I want to do European Assault, I might do European Assault in, um, uh, in March, maybe we'll do that. But, um, thank you guys for watching, and thank you everybody who came by this, and, um, and, you know, the biggest shout-out here is to the, um, uh, to the brave men, um, in the Marines and the Army that, you know, fought against Imperial Japan, is, I cannot imagine the horror that that must have been, just the, the, e surviving something like that and then coming back home, it's like, I cannot imagine what kind of mental state some of those guys must have had, like, going through that, those horrible things, the, the suicide bombings, the bonsai charges, all the traps, the, um, uh, an enemy that just would not surrender, the kamikaze attacks. I can't imagine what it, what it would be like for Pacific, you know, World War II veterans, you know, the horrors that they must have experienced. But, um, thank you to them, and thank you for, you know, defending our, our country, and for, you know, stopping Imperial Japan. Imperial Japan is one of the most evil, one of the most evil empires in history, and, uh, the, the U.S. wasn't the only one who stopped it, you know, it was a combined effort. 
But I want to give a special shout out to the brave people in the armed forces. You know, the World War II veterans who stood up to Imperial Japan and helped stop that evil empire. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed this playthrough. If you did, do drop a like. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone. Have a wonderful day, guys.